Um, following up with that, th this is a little tougher. Uh, you know, a lot of veteran uh, elected officials, administrators, uh, you know, people involved in the, com the business community. The one big thing right now that's on the radar is the unfunded, the, the pensions, especially the firefighters. Being a firefighter is the expectation that you'll get on the commission and defend the firefighters, or, or how do you, how do you, today is a big deal about weighing consequences and balances. So how do you dispel the myth that he's a firefighter, he's just gonna jack up the salaries and pensions? Well, first I would hope that people who know me, that know me realize, and I, I, did, I served four years in Edgewater, uh, that's not my style, I'm, I'm here to, uh, to, you know, look at what's best for our citizens uh, the unfunded liability, obviously, uh, we, uh, with the uh, with the firefighters, uh, there are a lot of things that are in place there. We have uh, the state that regulates our 175 and 185 pension plans, but uh, my job is to protect and serve our our number one resources, which is our our citizens and our quality of life, and we need balance. And if we, if you're out of balance in one end. It's not going to be good. How? Uh, I'm going to kind of jump in on you guys yeah, and go right thoughts in. come in. How quickly would you be responsive to pushing city administration, um, other colleagues on your elected board to say, okay, we can't wait another four years. We can't wait until next year. What? Wh how soon would you want to push the pension issue? Well, the pension issue is being it's a collective bargaining issue, and I know that both uh, all the sides are right now at the table. I know Luna, the police, the fire, and I know those guys, they're, they're good people. They're worth, they want to be a part of that solution. They want to be a part of, of being able to alleviate some of the concerns that the citizens may have about the unfunded liability. And I think uh, in the future, you'll see some results. And that's the, the thing, is getting both sides together, all the sides Thank together, you. and being Excellent. working together. Ed, your uh, Mr. Padol, your turn. There's a, a large scale development in Port Orange, I'm sure many of you have shopped at it, called the Pavilion, Port Orange. Um, right off the interstate, uh, next to where that part of Port Orange has mushroomed in the last 15 years. Uh, the figures I had were 1.1 million in sales tax revenues for Port Orange and Volusia County, 1.2 million for local schools, $157,000 for fire and rescue. Mr. Bedall, in this community, Lowe's has been turned down, some other uh, bigger developments, maybe they weren't in the right location or what. Would you turn down a pavilion if it was get hand rep to you today? Today, right now, at this moment, absolutely. I think there's a lot of research that needs to be done. Uh, yes, we want development. You would turn it down? Absolutely, okay. at this moment. Without any type of knowledge in front of me at this moment, I would say no. We need to look at how we direct our traffic. Port Orange, that pavilion fits Port Orange. They don't get the beach traffic that we get. They don't get the amount of, of people that follow that corridor into New Smyrna and to our beaches. Uh, those people aren't going to Port Orange to shop. They're going to the beach to have a great time and to enjoy this, this little town. Well, Mr. Patel, let me follow up with that because you're making a good point. Um, you know, as Canal and some of the more traditional areas try to define, redefine themselves and stay relevant, and the competition with you know State Road 44, and you're talking about the, the, the traffic coming from the, the corridor there, it's kind of a catch-22 where you have those super Walmart, and you've got um, ABC Liquors, and you've got the shops, what, I don't know, shops of Coronado. There's, there's some good things coming there. Um, would that be a good location? It's possible. Um, my, my biggest problem is, is what, what happens to the community businesses that have been in this town on the US-1 corridor for all these years? ABC's been there. Now what do we do with an empty building that they build out there? Uh, I don't know if, if, if many people, I'm sure everybody's traveled to the new Walmart. Uh, it was convenient where it was at, and granted it's nice. Uh, it takes you an extra 15, 20 minutes just to get out there, and if you go out there at, at Sunday afternoon trying to come back home, uh, you're going to sit in traffic for over an hour. Uh, it, that's tough. Um, we we need, really need to look into the to the core problem of what our traffic issue is going to be. Businesses are great; they create jobs, they they they, they bring the town a little closer together. But at the same time, you could divide it very easily with the businesses that are already in place in this town. 
Um, thank you, very well done. Mr. Cassidy, um, there, your predecessor, she's soon to be off the commission. That's Commissioner Lynn Plaskett has been here for a, a few terms. Uh, very, very demonstrative about her district and very strong. Uh, she voted against a cracker barrel because she thought that they didn't come down enough to what New Smyrna wanted. In this economy, you've got moms, you've got um, you've got Ruthies, you've got um, you know you've got the the, 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 the little um, breakfast place on the Flagler, um, you've got JC's, you've got Denny's. Denny's is like the one corporate breakfast area. And what can a uh, Cracker Barrel do to hurt? I mean, would it help bring more people, or would it mean the demise of some of those more traditional, like Mr. Bedolf said, the ABC Liquors closes down. What happens to the mom and pop, mom and pop places, and how do you turn it down in this economy? Well, first of all, I haven't. Uh, you can't really turn it down, uh, but saying that, I'm not going to say yes right away too until I, I actually see the site plan for it or uh, find out what kind of impact it will have on the economy. Obviously, a place like that is going to generate jobs. Um, it's going to bring uh, benefits, revenue to. Uh, New Smyrna Beach as well, um, but I, I can't I can't say would I be for it at the moment. I, I would, but I, I would definitely have to see a site plan for it and find out uh, just evaluate it a little bit more. Well, Mr. Uh, Commissioner Grasty, if you could just clarify, I think the board voted four to one for its approval. Is it pretty much a done deal? It's gonna it's gonna come here. Cracker Barrel owns the property now. Okay, thank you. Um, getting back to. Um, Getting back to uh, Port Orange, uh, Kirk. Port Orange seems like there's bulldozers, there's tractors, there's hotels going up, there's Walgreens going up. People here say, we don't want another Dunlawton. We don't want another Ridgewood. But what do you do to give tax relief to a senior base that's becoming more stretched, especially those on limited incomes? It goes back to getting everybody involved all things are possible if we can just work together. And I think that we we can't have it just one way. You know, we we hear about our taxes are high. We want to balance it out. And you know, and if we bring an industry in here, that's a mix that can you know make it a balance where the homeowners are not you know sharing most of the burden of the tax base. We need to bring industry in here. And I think we have so much in place already to attract businesses. That would be, uh, you know, uh, beneficial to our community and for our liking. And it's not, you know, when you mention economic, everybody thinks smokestacks and all that stuff. No, we we can bring in some uh, light uh, light industry that can be, you know, helpful for our well, community. Let me ask you this. I mean, everybody says we have this potential. We can do this. We can do that. If you go to Port Orange, if you go to Ormond Beach, if you go to Deland, you go to, you know, uh, you go to DeBerry. They're all saying the same thing. In this economy, what do you do? And any three of you can jump right in. What do you do to give that? Act? Is it the beach? Is it is it the charm? I mean, you've got an airport, but then you have people that are upset with all the flying and the twirling, and um, you know you've got the potential for maybe some shops on US one uh, where the uh, bad uh, not the bad car. Jack, what's that one across the street that was torn down? I'm done. Yeah, done lumber. Um, where, where do you go and get that extra out there to people that hey come to come come to New Smyrna well, Beach? First of all, our quality of life is very important. You know we have you know a lot of things in place. You have the you know the beaches, you have the waterways, you have the arts, you have uh, a, a, a good parts and recreation department. You have uh, potential right there at the F FEC the, the, the uh, rail site uh, for industrial development. You know I know that uh, people know Warren Buffett. Is a very smart man. He's a very rich guy. He's bought a lot of railroads, and we all know that hauling freight is a lot cheaper than by hauling it by truck. So not only that, in mind, that's that to me, that's a, a, a very uh, a unique spot. It's got a lot of high potential. So all those things in, in place, but we have to change our attitude about it. We have to change and really know that we can do these things. We believe that we put our community together, and get all all the team, everybody on the same page on the, in the team. And really let these people know that we're serious, because in the past, listen, there's 50 states out there that all in every city wants jobs. 
but we were unique. So if we could believe this and, 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 and uh, you know, uh, Mr. Bedell, would you like to chime in? I, I would love to. I, I'd love to see <clears throat> jobs that are going to bring our youth uh, long-lasting jobs than just uh, seasonal jobs. I'd like to see, uh, for instance, you know, just like in Edgewater with Edgewater Boats and Boston Weather, they, they, they're employing people for years. That's the kind of things that we need to bring into this community <laughs> that, that are longer-lasting than just the seasonal jobs that come around in Bike Week. And, and granted, they're great. They, they help our city. They, they expose our city to what what the charm is uh, but we need to bring in manufacturing jobs industry that will have long-lasting effects for our children that are graduating high school coming back home from college that's what I'd like to say thank you um, mr. Cassie I'm gonna not have you throw in on that one I want to uh, introduce uh, commissioner-elect Jason McGurk um, and with that said you have a veteran he's chairman of the planning planning and zoning a business small business owner in the city for you know, family tradition. What help will he be to you? Will you have you have a very experienced planning director in Gail Hendrickson? You've got Mr. McGurk. You've got a very experienced and strong-willed city manager. What will what will you absorb from that? Well, I mean, obviously, I know uh, Jason from Planning and Zoning Board. He's uh, the chairman of it, and he's uh, been beneficial uh, with because of his experience. Um, Gail obviously uh, works extremely hard, wears a couple hats down there in the city, and she's been very uh, supportive on the PNZ and has helped uh, through uh, things as well. Um, you know, obviously working with uh, everybody else, you know, I haven't had the chance to do that yet, so, um, and hopefully I will, but so far it's been just a fantastic experience. Mr. Bedal, I see you have your family here today. I know you're a very dedicated family man. Uh, in some communities like Daytona Beach and Holly Hill, the seedy areas that seem to be expanding. Um, you know, employment's at an all-time high. It's a lot of, you know, a lot of drugs, small petty crimes. What can you do to make sure that doesn't come this way? Well, first and foremost, I go back, it goes back to a, a question you asked earlier this morning. Uh, it's about our police and firefighters. We can't keep laying firefighters off and expanding our city. We can't keep expanding our city and laying off policemen. Uh, we need we need a stronger influence. We need we need to step up as a community and say we're not going to take this and be and play an active role. It takes a village to raise a child. It's very important that we all like like Kirk said we all get involved. Uh, that the, the seediness Daytona has been around forever. New Smyrna has been around forever. Daytona gets a little more profile than New Smyrna. We're we're that sleepy little town that has a lot to offer. And uh, there's issues with kids. Um, our school, our, our schools, our education. That's important, but most important, it, it starts at home. If we don't, if we allow our children to be out at 10 or 11 o'clock at night, they're going to get in trouble. And that's where, as a community, and our police force needs to be uh, not lightened. It needs to be increased. And uh, our parents need to be more involved in our children's lives. 